Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video goes into detail on how I created this resin sculpture dish vase, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it goes into detail on how I created the two layers and <coughs> put them together. Now, I've done something similar before, only in the past I've either used very thin bin liners to pour the resin on. And I've also, in my previous video, I used baking paper to pour the resin on. Whereas this time I've used cellophane bag, which I use when I put my prints in for um, my fine art. So my fine art prints go in these bags. So they're quite a bit thicker than bin liners, but not as thick as baking paper. So, so this is the kind of detail that you get. It's not so wrinkly. Just let me put that down. So it's not so wrinkly as in the thin bin liners, um, and not so rigid that you get with the baking paper. So, without further ado, let's get into how I created this piece. Now, as I mentioned, it's just been done on the plastic, and I'm basically just pouring the resin directly onto the plastic. No particular pattern or anything like that. The only thing I am doing is I'm pouring it in an oval shape and I do two of these. Although you only see me creating one, I do actually do two. And using a little bit of mineral turpentine, I've just moved the resin slightly and using the heat gun to uh, zap any bubbles. Now, as always, I like to use the acrylic diamonds, so I'm just placing them around the outer edge. We don't place them in the centre because when we drape it over the vase, it'll make the the bar, the resin piece uneven. So we d we just place them around the edge. Now, one of the reasons I also like to place the diamonds around the edge of the resin is that when it's cured and you've got some light behind them, they actually create like little windows of light through the resin because they obviously drop right through. So it creates a really nice interesting effect around the edge and especially when you've got light in the background. Now this has been curing for a couple of hours. Now as it's still quite warm out, it only takes a couple of hours, uh, two or three hours for the resin to be um, cured enough for me to move it so it's still bendy but it's it's not moving anymore. Um, and I just had my daughter help me place the plastic and the resin onto the vase just so an extra pair of hands so that I didn't have to try and slide it about once it was on there so try to position it as best as I could and then just I go around just trying to shape the resin as best as I can to get the best shape out of it. Now by placing um, the resin on top of each other on the plastic bags means that when we come to put them together they will they will fit perfectly inside each other. So now it's time to remove the bags. This has been left overnight. Now the resin itself is still a little bit pliable and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bags off here, put them together and put them back on the vase for another few hours um, just to make sure that that's hard enough and it's not opening anymore before I, I join the pieces together with resin. This has been left for a further 24 hours and now I'm going to stick the two pieces together. So I've just mixed up a very small batch of resin and I'm just going to coat the inside of the bottom piece and then put the other piece inside. And because we've placed them on the vase originally on top of each other, they will slot together quite nicely. I'd also like to mention using the shiny bags has left us with a shiny piece of resin whereas bin liners would have left us with a matte resin so no further tidying up of this is required. So that's it for another very simple, quick and simple resin piece. 
If you like this video and would like to see more of the same, please subscribe to this channel. As always, a list of the um, products used will be found in the description below. So until next time, bye now.